Did you know that everything taught by the church today concerning tithing is unbiblical? I want to say that again. Everything taught by the church today concerning tithing is unbiblical. Let me begin with the contents of the tithe. There are 16 texts in the Word of God that define the contents of the tithe. And in every single passage, the tithe can only ever be food produced in God's holy land. If you lived outside the land of Israel, you are not required to tithe. If you are not a farmer, you are not required to tithe. If you were a fisherman, you didn't have to tithe. Fish were not accepted as part of a tithe. If you were a merchant, you didn't have to tithe. If you were a blacksmith, you didn't have to tithe. And if you were a carpenter like Jesus, you didn't have to tithe. Most of Jesus' disciples did not have to tithe, and Jesus himself did not pay a tithe because tithing could only ever be food from God's holy land. Now many people try to argue that the reason why food is required is because money was not used. This is incorrect. The word money is used 32 times in the book of Genesis alone. If you get a Strong's Concordance and just look up the word money, you will see that it is listed hundreds of times in the Old Testament. You also have the word shekel as well that is also listed many times in the Old Testament, including the Pentateuch, 32 times in fact in the Pentateuch. So the idea that people had a barter system and didn't use money is incorrect. Now some people try to argue that Abraham tithed from his income and Abraham is the father of faith and so therefore we who are also of the faith should tithe with Abraham. This is incorrect. Abraham never tithed from his income. He never tithed from his income. He tithed once from the spoils of war and the other 90% went to the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah. So trying to use Abraham as an example of somebody who tithed from their income is not a good example. In addition to that, he was not called Abraham at that time because he had not yet been justified by faith. He was called Abram. So that's not a very good example for people to use to try to argue that we have to tithe from our income. And at this point, I really want to challenge you. If you believe in tithing, show me one verse in the Bible that says that everybody must pay 10% of their income. Now, some people try to go to Malachi chapter 3, and they try to say in Malachi chapter 3, it says that if you don't tithe, you're robbing me. And then it says to test God by tithing to see whether God would pour out his blessings upon you. I want to show you a couple of things about that passage. First of all, Malachi the prophet is speaking to people who are not obeying the tithe of Leviticus and the Pentateuch. In other words, this is not something expected of everyone. It's again going back to what God required in regards to tithing, and that is he required farmers to tithe. But what's important about this passage, and it turns the whole thing on its head, is that Malachi was not actually speaking to the people. He was speaking to the priests who were taking more than their fair share of the tithes. Let me prove that to you. If you go to Malachi chapter 2, Malachi chapter 1 is written to the people. But then in chapter 2, he then in verse 1 says, And now, O ye priests, and he begins to address the priests, and he begins to speak against their sins. Verse 8 also says, uh, mentions the Levites. And then in verse 3, it mentions the Levites again of chapter 3. So th chapter 3, verse 3. And we see here that he's addressing the priests all the way through chapter 2, all the way to chapter 3. And then it says, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Listen to this. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. In other words, he's addressing the priests and saying, you have not only robbed me, God, but you have robbed the entire nation. This is a situation more akin to Benny Hinn, Creflo Dollar, Joyce Meyer, and all these big prosperity preachers, and perhaps even your local pastor, 
taking tithes and offerings that were not intended for him and getting rich out of them. This is what Malachi is addressing. He's not addressing the people. He's addressing the priests taking more than what they were entitled to of the tithes and offerings. You see, the tithes were not just meant for the priests. They were meant for the entire Levite community. And if we keep reading here in Malachi, I want to point something out to you. It says in verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Now, when it says storehouse here, it's referring to the Levitical cities, which contain storehouses. And the tithes were brought into the Levitical cities for the Levites. But not all Levites were priests. Let me show you something in 1 Chronicles chapter 23. 1 Chronicles chapter 23, we'll see what the Levites did. 1 Chronicles 23, beginning at verse 3, it says this, Now the Levites were numbered from their age of 30 years and upwards, and their number by their poles, man by man, was 38,000, of which... 24,000 were set for work at the house of the Lord. 6,000 were officers and judges. Moreover, 4,000 were porters and 4,000 praised the Lord with the instruments which I made, said David, to praise therewith. This is something from David. Notice here that some of this stuff is government stuff officers and judges. We see the praise and worship team receiving the tithe. We see that the Levites, because the Levites was to whom all the tithes were due, the Levites were not just priests, but they had a whole array of activities. And when it says in Malachi to bring in the tithe to the storehouse, it's to pay all of these people, all of these people were to be paid. The worship leaders at the temple were not volunteers. They were paid. It was their job. So when we look at the tithe and bringing it into the storehouse, it's not just for the priests. It's for greater things than this. And there are other passages that talk about the tithe being used for the poor and the needy and the orphan and for the widow. So we need to see that the tithe is meant for uh, the greater work of God, not just to pay these people. And what's interesting here is these priests were keeping it all for themselves instead of giving it to the people that deserved it. But nonetheless, in the New Testament, we are not taught tithing. This is something specific for the Israelites living in the land of Israel. There's no text anywhere that says that all the Israelites tithed, only the farmers, and there's no text anywhere that says that all people for all time must give 10% to the Lord. There's nothing that says that. And so I want to encourage you to search the scriptures for yourself. And there's a really fantastic website, which I'm going to link to in the description of this video, where you can get a massive amount of resources about tithing. This is a massive in-depth website from a guy who did his PhD in tithing, and he will show you things that will blow your mind as you study it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've liked it, please give me a thumbs up. If you agree or disagree or want to correct me on something or whatever, please leave a comment in the comment section, and I'll see you there, and you'll see me in my next video.